Have you ever wondered what the x does on the end of a function in Power BI? Well, in this video, we are going to talk about iterator functions and how you can use them to power your performance through data. If you are finding my videos for the first time, make sure you hit like and subscribe below so you are notified of future videos. As I mentioned in this video, we're going to talk through iterator functions and how you can use them. Uh, you would have seen different functions within Power BI, and you would have seen the sum x, min x versions of a normal sum or minimum function. Um, and these have differences and can be used in different scenarios. Uh, so first, we're going to create a few examples and walk through them. So first, we're going to talk about a normal aggregation function. Uh, and so we'll create a measure. And we're just going to call this high speed running distance. And all we're going to use is sum. And we will add in band 5 here. So if we just add this to our canvas, what we'll find is that our value is quite high. So we've got it's at 148,000. So this is going to give you some idea of what a normal aggregation function does. So if we add on, for example, athletes as our axis, we see each of our different athletes and they all have slightly different values. So what we're already seeing is that the normal function will work in relation to the context applied to it. So you can see there on the given days, again, the numbers are, value, uh, the numbers are different, the values are different, and you'll see that for each day. Then again, if you were to go a step further, and if you apply a slicer on the outside, that it's going to adjust based on the filters that are applied in it. So you can use that with sum, you can use average, and it'll do the same thing for a given day. But say now you want to change this slightly, let's use sum again. But say now you wanted it to add together, for example, the high speed running distance of band 5, 6, and 7. What you could try is try adding that within the brackets. And what you're already seeing here is it's not looking for a column for me. So let's try and override that and we'll just add it here. But what's going on? It's, it's not working. And that's because, as it says here, the sum function only accepts a column reference. All right, so we can't do it that way. How else can we do it? So this is the beauty of sum x or our iterator functions. If we change this to sum x, and then if we add in our table, which is load data, we can now add an expression here. So if we go add here and we'll go band six, and then we'll also add band seven. We hit enter and now we can see our values are much higher. Again, if we add a, another layer of uh, filtering to this, for a single athlete we can see on a given day, in a match for example, it's about a K of high speed running. Whereas during some training sessions, it's about 300 to 600 meters. So you're probably wondering, how does that work? And the beauty of the iterator functions is that they will apply this expression to every single row before giving you an answer at the end. Uh, it'll use temporary memory to do this, and it'll uh, add all those functions, store it in temporary memory, and then at the end, it'll clear the temporary memory for you. So that's pretty cool. So what are some other things that we can actually use this for? And this is where it starts to get even cooler, is we can use the same kind of uh, chart. Let's do that here. And we'll use a similar measure, but let's create a new one. So I'm just going to copy this over, just this part. And then go new measure. And we will call this HSR distance. Oops. 
distance average. So let's change this to an average x now. And so if we did this and we added this on, let's see what happens here. So this is our line value. And we can see here it's way down here at a thousand. So on that day it's a thousand. Interesting. So what we could do now Let's go and add our slicer back. Oh, didn't mean to do it for that one. Let's add our slicer down here. We will. Let's choose a single athlete here. And as expected, the values line up with what we have as our bar chart. But now if we go an extra step, we can make some adjustments. So if we use all here, for example, we can change the filter context that's applied to this measure directly. If we go enter, now you can see of all of the data that we've got selected, we've got this as our value. We could make a slight change to this as well. We could change this to a filter and we could add a filter context here. So as an example, uh, we might create some variables here. So let's go down a couple lines. We will go var equals, oh, we'll go date. Let's not go date, let's go athlete equals. And we'll go uh, selected value athlete. So now we have an athlete, and let's go var uh, value equals average x. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to filter for every athlete and just going to filter back to what we have, to the one athlete that we have selected. So let's go enter. We actually need to return our value before we do any of this. So let's go down, return value. Enter. And here, just for a single athlete, 352. So it changes a little bit for each athlete. What you could also do, and this is an interesting one that you could try, is we have our different training types here. Say if you wanted to just filter it or you wanted a specific training type, you could change that as well. So. Let's do that here and we'll go training equals and let's choose match. Hit enter. So now we've got a value that's much higher and we can see the average values for a match. So that's the cool thing about our iterator functions is because it's applying the context to every row, uh, you can adjust it and you can add uh, some changes and filters to your table that you're uh, using to get the value you want. So that's pretty cool. You can use this for many, uh, any number of things. Uh, like here we have our average overall time for matches. You could use an average overall time for different training sessions. Or you could apply something completely different. And that's all up to you. So if you've liked this video, please make sure you hit like and subscribe below so you're notified of future videos. And if you're looking to use the iterator functions in Power BI, let me know what you're going to use it for in the comments below. And I hope to see you next time where we will continue to power performance through data. Thank you.